The next leader of the General Services Administration should serve as chief operating officer for the country. It is one recommendation from members of President-elect Biden's transition team for improving government IT. Ann Duncan is Chief Technology Officer for State and Local Government at Dell. She's former Chief Information Officer at the Environmental Protection Agency. Greg Godbout is Director of Digital Services at Fearless. He's former Chief Technology Officer at EPA. Folks, welcome. Thanks very much for coming on the program. Ann, I want to start with you. What was the impetus for looking at what you looked at in this work? Yeah, thanks, Francis. It's really great to see you again. Um, the reason that we looked at this is, is is Greg and I both realized, and it wasn't a hard realization, that we've seen a lot of innovation in the government, we've seen a lot of great things happen, but what we haven't seen is that innovation scale across entire agencies or across the entire government. We see a project, two projects, three projects, or a group of people within an organization who are doing something great, but we're just not seeing that level of change, and so we're continuing to see the things that we created the digital services movement to end, which are failed projects, and, and really slow delivery. Greg, you and Ann are proposing making the General Services Administrator the Chief Operating Officer, as I mentioned at the beginning, and centralizing a lot of these digital operations at GSA. Why is that the right place for this centralization to happen, Greg? Yeah, it's a good question, and thank you for having us on. I we we went back and forth on this one so um we we talked about some potential things at like omb uh things like that U ultimately what we wanted to see was an organization that's strictly dedicated to um delivery effectively right like and and the implementation of it and we felt that with the services and centralized services that uh tts has been setting up um that that GSA was sort of a natural place to sort of build those types of services that can be used by other agencies to do it. So if you lift it up there, you do it. Also, um, OMB has a lot of like policy and oversight roles and things like that, that we just ultimately felt that like at GSA, it made sense um, from their implementation standpoint that you would get a lot of those early adopters. People would be more likely to sort of work with a group um, that necessarily wasn't also doing like the, the oversight and the budget, stuff like that, so. Greg, by mentioning the Technology Transformation Service at GSA, you get at the heart of one of the IT debates in the Obama administration, which was, what should live in the digi U.S. Digital Service and what should live at TTS? What does that look like under the model that you and Ann have developed? Oh, I, I think you could, I think there's a lot of flexibility under the model that we've developed, but my, my recommendation, and I'd be curious, Ann, if you wanna disagree with any of this, but um, my, my recommendation would be that if you look at like U.S. Digital Services and things like that, that they focus on sort of presidential priorities and um, intervention-like engagements. So your things that are sort of important and urgent, right? And when you look at like GSA and TTS, there you're taking appropriated dollars from agencies and they are choosing to spend that money with them. And in that sense, you really need your early adopters. And so I'd like to see the transformation implementation go from that route. And then you could probably heavily support that inside OMB with the, CIA, with the US uh, CIO's office being more geared towards the transformation work as opposed to the intervention work. And you want to critique that on the fly? Uh, you know, I rarely want to critique Greg because he's a smart guy, and I think that I would approach it the same way. We've always talked about the fact that, it, you know, USDS is there to fight fires, and 18F and TTS uh, are there to help build buildings, and I think that's a great, uh, great way to go about it. And you and Greg have four steps in this proposal. The first one is the GSA step that we talked about a moment ago. Second one's inspiring the innovation workforce with the presidential leadership fellow. We'll let that one stand for now. The third one's guide government leaders with the agency transformation playbook, and I'd love to have you come back and talk about that one. Um, the other one I want to touch on today is ensuring continuity by establishing a transformation advisory board. What does that look like and what's the model for that, Ann? So the idea of the Transformation Advisory Board is to have a group of, of senior leaders who will span uh, administrations so that, you know, we did, did a pretty good job between the Obama and the Trump administration of people keeping this going, but there's no guarantee that from administration to administration work will continue. So just like the Defense Board, this board would be an opportunity to really uh, make sure that you have people who aren't terming out when the president leaves who are in very senior positions, who can help guide innovation throughout the organization and provide some real horsepower around recommendations and mandates. 
The Defense Innovation Board, Greg, is, as Ann mentioned a moment ago, you're one of the models that you're thinking about there. And I wonder if there's also either a role for an organization like the Chief Information Officers Council and the other councils, or for a structure like that, um, that will perpetuate that kind of knowledge transfer and, and, and momentum that Ann's describing. Yeah, I, I think I think again, this is another um, recommendation we have that there's room for for movement underneath on how you actually implement it. I think the the most important aspect is um, sort of the independence from the political nature of things coming in because um, you you there's a there's a tendency to look with within the political parties, there's a tendency to look within their own political parties and see what innovations they did. But there's things happening at all times that you want to like, hey, this is really important. This is exciting. We need to continue this thing forward. And I think that's easier to do when you have a continuous group watching it live as opposed to like, oh, there's a transition happening and let's figure it out now. No, we've been working with these groups. We've seen the successes. We've seen them pivot on their failures and lessons. And we think this deserves investment and should go forward. Greg Godbout and Duncan, thanks very much for joining me. It's great to have you on.